Hi, everyone. Um, I'm happy to announce uh, the next guest in our Under the Spotlight sessions, the lovely colleague from uh, the Netherlands, always helpful, Sylvia Moes. Sylvia, I'm, I'm very curious about your story. Uh, thank you so much, Monique, for the introduction. I will share my slides with you. Can you see it? Yes, okay, we can super, see you. Super yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, super good. Slides. Okay. Yeah. yeah, thank you so much for having me here over. It's a great pleasure to, to, to go through the track records since I worked on open materials and uh, all kinds of narratives that uh, has to do with it. Um, I bring it back to 18 slides, so I don't want to spend too much of your time. Um, I give the highlights, uh, and if you have questions, please feel free to ask me. Um, we start in 2005. Um, I was organizing uh, a conference together with SURF, a national board in the, in the Netherlands, and Kennisnet, on the interoperability of content via learning technology standards. I was in that period one of the three experts in the Netherlands on learning technology standards. And we worked with IMS content packaging and IMS QTI that are standards to make content interoperable between different kinds of learning management systems, but also to different kinds of uh, learning repositories. So this was my first entrance uh, in the question how to make open learning materials available. And sorry for the birds in the background. It's, um, I hope they will be uh, somewhat uh, um, no, quieter in a moment. Um, so this was the start of it. We had uh, a big pro program with 800 uh, participants, different uh, um, uh, sessions, keynote speakers. Um, I did run it for uh, three years. Um, in 2006, my first experience with um, sharing open educational materials, uh, I started up with SURF together. Uh, it's called LORNET, Learning Object Repository Net. Um, and this is still um, the framework we are using today for sharing learning materials. Uh, on the right hand side, you see the, uh, the repositories of the institutions and the harvesters via EduRep. And via EduRep, you have a portal which is nowadays edu sources, but the infrastructure still is the same. We improved it, uh, of course, in the background and in uh, functionalities, but the core business is still um, used uh, from this standard. Um, the metadata standard for it was um, IEEE LOM, and from IEEE LOM, we make a translation to NLOM. So we have a Dutch version of the IEEE LOM to uh, harvest the metadata over different kinds of repositories. Um, in 2007, I published the first um, uh, guide and um, insights on uh, learning technology standards together with Petra Busseroy and um, Frank Benneker and Pierre Gorissen. Uh, the URL is given in below and there we give some highlights on um, the hot topics at that moment and the advice for uh, the future. Um, then in 2007, we also worked which serve to share um, open video materials. So institutions can uh, make collections of their own video materials, um, broadcasted materials, but also content uh, from teachers uh, and to bring them together in collections and make them open or semi-open available. And that was also done by the NLOM standard and the Harvester uh, we just talked about in uh, 2006, so that was the core business, the core framework for sharing uh, these kind of materials. Uh, a lot of institutions in the Netherlands were um, submitted to it. At that moment, I was the chair of the sp uh, special interest group media in education. So at that time, we looked at the accessibility of content, but also the integration in learning design and how you can uh, intensify learning for better learning outcomes. And from that point on, we have learned that when students 
have more interaction with the content and with each other, 15% more of the students will approve for the first exam. And um, that was uh, quite uh, a finding. And we did it over several 13 higher education institutions in the Netherlands to see. Uh, and there's a publication uh, as well from the OAS, OASIS uh, project in, published in 2008. Um, further on, uh, we discovered that we had a lot of uh, video materials at that moment from the broadcasting companies and from the uh, users itself. And we generate an, a portal uh, called Soup, a search profile from uh, teachers. And to instead of let them search to um, write video materials for their educational purpose, purposes, we give them attention to um, these materials. Like nowadays, when you buy something, uh, the, the portal is saying, maybe this is interesting for you as well. Um, uh, and I worked together with Eric Duval, who sadly uh, passed away in 2016 at the age of 50. But he was a very good um, friend of mine and um, a very good partner uh, to work with together on attention metadata and the um, accessibility of content in general. Um, so he was the founder of attention metadata framework. And what he did was to see, um, to have a look on the uh, profile of interest of the users. And he did write an algorithm for it to see what do you use? What do you ignore? What is your uh, profile of interest from um, the, the, the courses you are giving? And how can we uh, generate a dynamic profile for you so we can give you updates on material which is interesting for you? And we had a conference paper on it in 2010 in the, in the States, in uh, Southern Maine, um, to, to, show, to, to show it in, 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 um, in a pilot on the portal of the SOUP portal. Uh, so teachers have a, um, a profile of interest. They create their own uh, content in collections. And via the intention metadata, we suggest them new kind of materials matching their profile of interest. Uh, teachers can uh, make snippets out of the video materials, uh, create short links, a virtual cutting machine, and share it with other um, teachers in their domain. Um, 26 higher education institutions were involved in um, using this platform at that, um, at that time. And we also win an award um, from SURF. Uh, SURF was um, established then for 10 years and uh, was given an award for the best project in the 10 years of time. And we did won the uh, award with, the, with this project. Um, um, then we moved over to 2011, iTunes U was coming up, uh, I think um, a couple of years before or already in the States, but in 2011 for the first in Europe, and we were together with um, uh, Technische Universiteit uh, Delft, Technical University in Delft, and I think it was Tilburg or Utrecht, I don't know for sure anymore. Um, we were the third in line to uh, hooked on um, in iTunes U, and um, the repository that we have with the content, we uh, did use the same infrastructure to bring the content to the iTunes U platform via uh, uh, RSS uh, feeds. So you were still the owner of the content in your own repository and via the RSS uh, feed, the content was showing up in uh, collections. And um, at that moment of time, I think this was the first uh, course based open learning content movement. This is prior to the, to the MOOCs. Later on, you got the MOOCs. This was the first, this was the first uh, introduction to it. Um, we worked together with Apple on it. We also worked together. Uh, we rent, uh, we uh, may use some uh, iPads from Apple to intensify learning in the field, where uh, students went to Rome to do uh, research on film locations, and we used the iPads to give them entrance to the film material uh, on an interactive map. So we always combined things 
together to make um, content open as so uh, open as much as uh, possible and reusable. Um, yes, one of the big um, the big ones in our collection was Jochen Bretsneider. He was he is a medical doctor at the uh, Vue University uh, Medical Center, um, and he had a great collection of qualitative materials on open. And he is now uh, a film producer for open video materials. And he was one of the first on uh, iBooks who produced um, iCourses on um, this platform. Um, we move on to uh, 2015 because you have a lot of video content and a lot of uh, reuse of it. So we also paid extra attention on the copyright issue, especially on video materials. So we made um, 10 uh, knowledge scripts on different kinds of aspects, how you can use uh, video material in certain circ uh, 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 circumstances. Especially in that time, uh, the, the video lectures were coming up. So a lot of questions uh, raised on um, what is the way I can use my content, my PowerPoints. Can I use uh, pictures I've made in the museum, in my web lectures, that kind of questions. What I have to do with students in the classroom, what I have to do with uh, learning materials from students. It's all given in the, the answers are all given by a, a specialist on the topic in 10 uh, video clips, sadly enough, it's in um, Dutch, but um, yeah, it's, uh, it's still online and um, people are using it. So it's, the, it's still in use. Um, in 2016, I started with speaker rec recognition on video because students have to uh, find uh, video materials more easily, not only uh, all the video materials, but also the, uh, and especially when you talk about video lectures, students want to hip hop to the right moment in the video lecture and the video lecture at that time was one hour, 45 minutes. So via speech recognition, you can easily say these kind of topics are uh, available in these kind of uh, video materials. And I work together with specialists on this field. And the one, uh, the ones I want to uh, point it out is Arja van Hesse from uh, University uh, University Utrecht and Twente in the Netherlands, um, and uh, Carlos Tura Ribalta, a, a good friend of mine in Valencia. He is uh, at this moment he is working on on the fly translation of uh, spoken words to uh, text, but also making translation into word from Spanish to English, for example. So if you want to look at the newest uh, developments uh, on, on it, please follow him for the um, translations on the fly. We um, work together in the Netherlands further on the inside, together with the Lib National Library uh, working group um, to see which kind of uh, software is performing the best of speech recognition and we give an advice to serve and now we um, the advice we give is part of the European the European tender uh, for a new video portal where it's one of the fun basis functionalities to uh, work with speech to text to make it uh, more um, accessible findable but also to use speech to text for um, 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 how do you say it? Uh, on the teaching subtitling uh, for students with uh, problems hearing or following the material. Um, we moved over to 2018. Um, Surf asked me as a consultant to advise them uh, on, um, on a strategy to set up a uh, national platform for learning materials. And they asked me because of my track record since 2005 and the learning technology standards, the way it, uh, content is used uh, by teachers and uh, the speech to tech recognition with video and the searchability of it. So it was all coming uh, together. And now I work one day a week for SURF since then. And uh, you see one of the outcomes here, we have a, a national platform with eight and a half thousand um, learning materials. Um, we still use the, the framework uh, we worked on since 2006. So the, the, the back end is still uh, the same. We did 
perform on uh, um, development of functionalities. Um, so we do have a full text search. We have uh, meta, standard metadata with full text search. And at this moment, we are working on linked data and AI to make, um, to find the materials which are um, interesting for special domains. Um, for example, you have a study guide with learning outcomes. We have vocabularies uh, for a specific domain where the skill set of students is uh, given in a taxonomy structure and you have the content by yourself and you, and you bring them together. You can say, okay, the three together, the learning material is uh, in ascension ready for use for these kind of activities or these kind of types of users. We are in a pilot with it now and we will uh, show the results in the Open Education Week in March, which you can follow if you want to. The URL of the platform is given below. You see also uh, at the top communities, we have 22 communities at this moment working together on the creation and sharing of learning materials. And from the National Library Working Group, we support these kinds of teachers in creating uh, uh, collections, giving them advice on uh, copyright issues, uh, quality plans for the learning materials, and so on. So everything is uh, connected together. And we are also working with the acceleration plan in scaling up uh, using these facilities over 30 higher education institutions for 1.3 million euros uh, running last year and this year. And therefore we created some tools support, to support people with uh, that. I move over to uh, this one. I skip back in, um, in just a minute. So this is the national uh, acceleration plan where I'm part of working together with different kinds of institutions to um, fasten, um, fasten forward to improve and integrate uh, the content, the tools we already have, the knowledge we already have to speed up. Um, and this is, um, an over this is an overview of the tools we produce. We started with an inventorization, what uh, the 22 communities would like to have from SURF in the infrastructure to um, share their learning materials in the best way possible. We make an inventorization of um, 50,000 open textbooks uh, to bring them under in categories, in uh, year, of, year of publication, in create content uh, type. And at this moment, we are searching for a way to make them searchable via federated search by the national platform. We created a, a, a guidebook, how to create uh, open textbooks. Uh, we are working on a new layer now for uh, how to give uh, uh, teachers support from the libraries and we create an interactive uh, tool where you can see how different kinds of learning materials can be used in, um, in the learning design to improve the learning outcomes based on publications. Um, and this is um, to, to scale up and to help the other institutions in doing so. Um, and um, since 2019, I've also been asked to be member, oh no, it's 2016, sorry, to be member of the uh, uh, National um, um, AFANET infrastructure, which is um, a national um, advisory board for the higher education institutions in the Netherlands. And, the archives to share the video materials um, and how to make collections, how uh, to make it sustainable, also in the different kind of um, content uh, from MP4 to other kinds of um, uh, extensions in video. So it's reusable over, over time. So also old uh, material is still accessible for people in the, in the next coming years. Um, yes, what I said is I'm chair of the working group uh, since 2009, Hilda was before, I took over in um, 2019, I set up uh, together with the team uh, a, a website for it, we make folders, flyers 
for uh, how we can support teachers, how we can work together as members. We have 30, 43 members at this moment, 21 from applied science, 22 from universities. And uh, the main focus of this work group is, is share your information which you have to strengthen the skills uh, of each other. And in that, uh, with that focus, we organized uh, seven workshops last year to um, help each other in developing the skill sets um, to um, give teachers a better um, support in integration of learning uh, materials. On the right hand side, you see an overview of it. And um, mostly of the time, 70 to 80 people showed up at, uh, at the workshops each time. Um, you see there also uh, at number seven, the course creation of uh, vocabularies. Uh, this is part of the SURF um, platform. So you have a set of linked data in a taxonomy structure so you can relate learning materials to a specific uh, form of use. It's extra information beside the standard uh, metadata information. And uh, we trained eight people now and we will re repeat this uh, course next uh, year. Um, let me see. Further, we worked uh, from a university on open textbooks. Uh, the first one was Ecotoxicology, uh, eco 700 pages in total, 65 authors in Europe, a peer-reviewed uh, book. Um, we work with Wikiwijs Maarten, a national platform to create open textbook. And you uh, create it on, uh, on that platform, but you have different kinds of outputs. You have PDF, you have eBooks. You can, click, with one click, you can integrate it in your learning. Um, in your learning platform and each chapter is um, published apart so uh, you don't have to reuse the whole book you can also you reuse uh, chapters and uh, other uh, members in the platform can adopt uh, chapters edit it and, and publish it all over again at the right hand side you see the integration with one click in canvas so it's interactive uh, in it's as accessible for students in an interactive way without going to another platform. But if students say, I want to download uh, a chapter for myself on PDF so I can use it uh, offline, it's also possible. It's all, um, it's all there. Uh, this one is uh, findable in AD sources, but also in MLO and also on op open, um, open platforms uh, for uh, textbooks. And you will also find this book in uh, WorldCat. Um, the next open textbook was Street Law. Um, two teachers worked together to create this open textbook on how to uh, develop a course on street law. And all the blue links are links to other sources with um, um, objects to reuse to, um, for course design. So there we re, um, make a combination of an open textbook together with uh, enriched content all in one, um, in one frame. And we have 26 medical open textbooks at this moment um, by one teacher. Uh, each teacher produced an open textbook. So this is, these are smaller components, uh, less, um, um, less chapters, but very useful uh, in higher education. And the teacher produced them in two or three days. So we have uh, a very open, a big open textbook. We have a smaller. Um, um, size and we have a solo which matching with the three steps in uh, how to create open textbook. Here you have the smaller ones, here you have the medium size and here you have the back, the big ones. So each uh, category is asking for another or point of organizations and steps to take. So we bring our knowledge in together with um, Technical University Delft. Um, and last but not least, um, from my uh, role from SURF, I created together with Jenny De Werk, a colleague of SURF, uh, interactive um, infographics for uh, higher education institutions, how to start up from a pilot with open learning materials to a level of services to maximizing the level, level of services. It's all in Dutch. Uh, it will be translated in English. Also the other materials, the open, how to create open textbooks will be translated. And also the uh, infographic 
how you can use um, different kinds of learning types for different kind of learning goals and learning activities. It will all be translated um, this year. Um, these are my slides so far. It's an overview of what I did. And um, I hope you um, can reuse the information um, further. That's the, the main goal. I will stop sharing. Okay, Sylvia, thank you. It was very uh, clear uh, and interesting uh, story. I'm um, always a bit uh, jealous at your technical uh, knowledge. <laughs> How did you achieve this uh, tech, uh, technical uh, knowledge? Did, did you have education for it or, or, or just uh, self-learning? Self-learning, yes. Open educational uh, resource for it. It's all self-learning. I'm trained in. A, I'm trained as a paramedic uh, person, not in this field. So um, it's all self-learning. Yes. So okay, thank you. I, thank you. I, I think you do a great job. Also uh, with uh, together with uh, Surf. I think Vanessa has a question. Yeah. So Sylvia, it. It's amazing um, all of the work that you've been doing over the years. Um, something I was curious about is um, which part of that journey did you enjoy most? What are you kind of most proud of? And and maybe also uh, what was maybe the most difficult or maybe there's some something you'd like to share with your colleagues, uh, something that you learned along the way where, where you would uh, um, yeah, maybe just um, like to share it with the rest. I'm Thank curious because there's, so there's such a broad uh, amount of work that you've been doing um, that's important on a, on a national level, but also on an international level. So that would be nice to hear a bit more. Yeah, thank you so much for your question, Vanessa. Um, most proud um, working together with Eric Duval on um, uh, the identity metadata, because I think we were far ahead of our time, you know, it's 2010, and we started with it in 2005, so, and we are just not at that point at, at the national platform, so I think we can, the, the time we spent together on this, I think it will help other institutions and other platforms in, in the future, um, like we had the discussion last week with, with um, with Spark and with Liber and, and make an inventorization of all the platforms. I think, yeah, we can reuse um, his knowledge and, and my experience in this to do not um, give an overview of, of a list of, of platforms, but to, to, to use federated search and, and to make it, um, to give it a higher quality, so to say, without working much harder, but working more efficient with the knowledge which is out there. Um, so I was most proud, proud on that and also especially because we did won uh, the prize for the most in, uh, innovative project in over 10 years of time, which has a lot of, of other projects nationally because in SURF each year um, 20 projects are running. So over, over 10 years time is 200 projects and we won. So I think, yes, I'm still very proud on that. I also uh, been proud and grateful that I can work with him. Uh, I learned so much from him, you know, um, so I will never forget it. And now I, I promised him to keep up uh, working to, to, to bring the knowledge out so that he passed away, but uh, we have to um, make use of, of his work and uh, because it's useful. Um, so that's the, the and, and I think everything we did we can reuse it in all the other lines we are working on still. So that's the main, the main focus. Um, uh, and the hardest part was to keeping up a portal which is used by 26 higher education institutions in uh, changing in changes of uh, reorganization within your own institution, because this is one of the first things uh, the, the plug has pulled out and say, okay, we don't have people to, 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 to support this, up the plug out and whatever. Um, 
so yeah it uh, was offline so at the same time we had a beautiful portal and in during um, the chaos in uh, universities as it could like go um, in reorganizations this was one of the first uh, things who uh, was put offline uh, so that was the hardest part um, yeah, I'm still not, I'm still thinking, my working my head around how can I uh, overcome this or predict that it was not happened. But, you know, in such a large scale of 35% of the staff going out, supported staff, it's, uh, you have to, you have to pick your battles, you know what I mean? You have to, you have to uh, stay there to, to keep your own job and at the other side, you want to uh, bring forward all the work you're doing, and then I make the decision um, to go for the intensive and in, intensive learning and blended learning because that was more in scope with the university than sharing open learning materials, which was in 2008. You know, so it was it was not in scope. So that was the hardest part because we worked so hard and it was used so well, and uh, it was painful. Yeah, it was painful. Oh, that's such a pity uh, to hear the the the, the last thing. <laughs> this is how it goes, you know. And, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. The world is a hard place to live in. Sometimes, yeah, yeah. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes it is. Yeah, yeah. But also and sometimes beautiful. You, yeah, sometimes you have influence and sometimes not, you know. And then you have to let it loose. But um, still, the knowledge we built on is still there. And we can reuse it at this moment. So it's gone, but not gone. You know what I mean? So you make the best out of it. So. Yeah, reincarnation, <laughs> so to say. Marta has uh, also raised her hand. So uh, I assume she has, a, she has a question for you. Yeah, yeah, that, was, Marta. <laughs> that was so fantastic. Um, I'm absolutely green with envy <laughs> <laughs> because, uh, but. I hear your pain because I think we have all been there before this business of projects being funded and they think it's a project. It's actually not a project. It's a fundamental infrastructure that needs to be constantly supported, but you have to constantly make the case for that. And sometimes, as you say, sometimes you have more influence than at other times. But actually, I was going to say to you, uh, I think it would be brilliant if you could give, even just write it up, give some advice to, not just to librarians, but to the people who are behind these infrastructures in other European countries. Because, I mean, I know from the case in Ireland that something that was really well used and, and, and well, you know, designed was pulled. And, and now we're finding ourselves with nowhere to put our educational resources. So I think this kind of knowledge about, yes, the technical side, but also the other, the political side, the, the, the how do you champion this so that the, the funding doesn't get plugged is super important. Yes, it was. And we make a scalable uh, business project, you know, um, to, to run the server um, each year. It costs 10,000 euros a year at that moment in 2008, you know, it's peanuts. Oh my God. But even even the 10,000 euros they were not uh, admitting to. So no, uh, what can you do, you know? It's like, um, yeah, we have to make our choices. Okay. Open is yeah. not uh, one of the priorities. Okay. Except, no, when, I, except I, I when except when a pandemic hits and then everyone yeah, has to yeah, access yeah, stuff but, online and then they don't have it. It was 2008. So confirm the situation at that moment. I, I worked for three years, hoping around to see if can, I can collect more money, but I did not succeed because all the institutions were in reorganization. So nobody has time for it or focus for it. So sometimes you have to let it loose and, and keep the faith that it your work will be rewarded. And now it is because I still can reuse it. We were far ahead of our time. You know, we were talking about its profiles of interest, attention yeah. metadata, sharing uh, materials in a specific domain. It's the same thing we are doing now. So nothing has changed. It's another, another, yeah. another platform, but still the same functionalities. 
absolutely yeah so it's hard but yeah sometimes you have to choose your battles and and um, uh, be the be, and uh, stay calm and to see how you can reuse um, the learning and and collaboration with Eric uh, in this especially um, so yeah we make the best out of it and I think we will sure benefit from it uh, in a better way. But thank you for your questions and remarks. Mm. Yes, I see in the chat a, a plus one to Marta's uh, comment from uh, Paola. <laughs> so, um, yes, I see uh, another hand raised from uh, Roberta. Hi, Ilya, thank you. It was very interesting. But I would like to know your opinion what do you predict is going to happen regarding open education? Okay, I'm interested in the Netherlands, of course, because you know you have been working for so long in this field, and you know you did uh, indeed things that we are still seeing now. Uh, but anyway, the the progress uh, within the institution has been very slow. So, do you think it's going to change this? Because we should be ahead of everybody else, seeing where you were in 2000 and eight you know so it is your yes. Yes. idea yes changes is made very slowly especially in the universities because the the uh, academic staff is still um, uh, accountable for their research and not for their education so uh, we did write an, a report on that in the netherlands and say hello you want to have some more open education, you want to have more qualitative learning materials, you want to have flexible learning, but hello, teachers, academics have to have time to do that. How, how can you solve the problems? And also the negotiation with the publishers at this point is very uh, stressful because of they, uh, their, um, the way they manage with, with the problems we have. They don't, the, the publishers don't agree we have a problems you know with learning materials so it's it's more like this uh, tied together not working together as a group we also give advice on that um, but i think um, we have to need good examples of how open education is used and benefits and to give the the the, the academics uh, a platform to to show the, the the result and the impact of it and then maybe we can we can change bit of bit and at the, at the backside we are working hard together to make all the existing uh, resources available and also in um, in the strategy of sustainability i think we have to pick on um, uh, national and european strategies to bring it out and to say okay it's about flexible learning it's about mobile learning it's about uh, accessibility of learning materials and also to show um research that um i will i will share it in the chat later on that research uh, showed that when students have better ac accessibility to content they perform better uh, so we have to bundle all the things together and i think we have to uh, make a roadshow or uh, on on conferences and so to work on uh, the milestones to to bring the word out Maybe we can write together uh, uh, um, a paper on it, uh, on um, uh, sustainability and things like that. But I think for sure we need some couple of years. You know, if, if you look at open access in the Netherlands, it, it, it costs you about 10 years to, to, to make it work. So I think we for sure need four or five years more to, to make more impact. But we have to keep working together, not give up, showing the good work, find and, and especially work together with, with academics. We want to spend time on it. We, we want to be supported because this, that is the motor we are working on. And uh, we, were, we know from a low 15 years ago, the teachers in communities are much more likely to share open learning materials because they know each other, they trust each other, they are speaking the same language in a specific domain. So therefore we start um, concentrating on that to, to make it more efficient. And therefore we give them the platform for communities to share the open content. And now via semi-automated metadata, it's much more easier to, to share learning materials and with profiles of interest, it's much more easy to find um, content. 
um, but then still you have a big of, uh, I think 70% of the teachers who copy and paste their, their course from last year, pass it over to next year, check the URLs and, and uh, keep it running. Um, I, uh, this is my open, open educational track record. I also work on IE. Uh, and we made a dashboard to give live uh, feedback to students how they perform in big classrooms, 450 students or so. And the teacher has a dashboard to see which kind of learning content I use with learning activities and how do students perform on that. And I think when this um, dashboard is more in use, it will be the entrance to say, okay, this kind of learning activities with this kind of material is doing not so well. Maybe we have a suggestion for open better qualitative content. So we, we, you know, you have to, you have to be a little bit of a chess player to see all the boards together and to, to swap around which move on which chessboard uh, you can make to, to make the best out of it. And sometimes it's a national or European strategy. Sometimes it's on institutional level and sometimes it's with the teachers in communities. So you have to switch all the time. And it's an interesting game, but uh, sometimes uh, what complicated. Okay, Is thank you a, uh, for your for inspiring you? story. I, I think mm -hmm. Paula has a question. Yeah, uh, but for you. one moment, Monique. I was oh, sorry if I was asking if this was an answer for her question or yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> thank you. Okay, let's move on to the other chess player, <laughs> Paola. <laughs> thank you, Monique. Thank you, Sylvia, very much for everything you shared with us today and. Uh, uh, what comes to my mind, thinking back to what you presented, but also what you are adding now, is uh, first of all that uh, it's a, a team effort. And uh, uh, if you see anything that uh, we as the NOL can contribute to as soon as, uh, for example, thinking about the, the open textbooks that uh, you talked us about and uh, uh, the work that can uh, be developed starting there as soon as the English, the first English version is available. Um, of course, I think that uh, we can contribute to that. But also, it's very interesting for me to, to think about uh, some of the keywords that you use. First of all, maybe because it touches me quite deeply, is patience. <laughs> because it's not easy to be patient. And your story tells us that patient, patience is crucial. Um, not only because uh, you have to be able to wait till the right moment when things are ready to be changed, but also because patience brings you uh, somehow the opportunity uh, while you wait on one side to think about the others and also to look at uh, the situation from up above. So when you say that you, you think it's crucial to look at the different uh, uh, chess players and uh, chess tables. I think this is what we should do together also, because uh, looking at the European strategy with all our eyes and all our different perspectives, and uh, being also aware of the problems that are uh, shared by all of us at national level, that could be really helpful for us to be at the same time patient while we need to, but getting ready so that and as soon as uh, we have uh, people around us with uh, the right attitude, we can let our voices be heard. And uh, so yes. I think that uh, at the same time, patience is a, a struggle <laughs> because it is, but it's an opportunity that we have to, to catch. Yeah. Yeah, you have to be patient, but work hard on the background. So you have to be patient and to see which, which is the right moment to move in with, with a certain topic. At the background, you have to prepare the topics and to, to bring it in with high quality. Maybe it's an idea to, to uh, work in a session on that as a brainstorm to, to collaborate on it and to see uh, the, the movements in Europe, but also in the countries and to see what is the what are the best practices, what are the pieces to, to bring together and how we, what are the chances to, 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 to go for a road trip or to, to do what, what can we do? Um, yes, we can work on that together. Yes. 
And from the open textbooks, um, I already had uh, in the last one of the last meetings a chat with um, uh, Lombard uh, on open textbooks. Maybe we can work together to also share his knowledge. And if our um, a guide is translated in English, maybe Lambert and I can, uh, together with Michiel de Jong from TU Delft, can give a uh, workshop on how to create open textbooks and how to support teachers and which platforms you can use to, to create ones. That would be wonderful. I think that the members would be really interested in participating. <laughs> Thank you for that. Yeah, thank you for your questions, Paula. Okay, and um, Vanessa has uh, raised her hand again, so she has uh, another question. Yeah, so uh, thank you very much. So, so coming back to what Sylvia and Marta were saying about um, developing some of this uh, essential infrastructure and then having to put it on hold or even say goodbye to some of it and that pain, I. I would love to hear, are there others on the call who have experienced that? So we, we also talked about, you know, reorganization, reprioritization, funds going elsewhere. Are there any others who've also shared this? Because I do think this is a really hot topic, not just it with open education, but actually for open science as well, where we're looking at how can we sustain an open infrastructure um, and so much of us are really investing our um, our hearts and minds into some of these uh, elements of this ecosystem. So I'm just thinking, uh, how big a problem is it? And if if there are others who share this, maybe we could also think about organizing an event to talk about this more and to share some of those experiences and look at how um, solutions going forward. So anybody on the call who has a similar pain, I, I'm curious. Yes, no? definitely. Yeah. Oh, yes. So, yeah, um, definitely. Uh, it's uh, not really the, the, the focus wouldn't be um, educational resources, so I wouldn't go into uh, the, the depth of it. But uh, yes, having um, big infrastructure pro pro um, projects and then um, having them buried after a couple of years and a couple of hundred thousand euros is definitely, <laughs> I guess, something. Um, yeah. yeah. Eric Duval once organized a, a conference on it, on the failures and on the, uh, um, yes, to share the lessons on it and to, 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 to collect it, to um, raise awareness for it, how we can make a change on that, yes. Would that be, would it be of interest to revive that discussion, so building on Eric Duval and, and some of those discussions to, to think about how do we become more resilient going forward? Um, and how do we perhaps try to plan some of this from the beginning when we start working on how to think about how do we sustain things? Would that be of interest or is it too early? We, we did think about sustainability and it costs only 10,000 euros a year, but you know, that, so we think about it, but even the rest, Sometimes the chessboard is a flip flop on the, from the table and all the pieces are on the ground. Uh, but yeah, um, I, I hear what you say. Yeah, I, yeah. for me, it's, uh, we can always learn from each other. You know what I mean? And maybe it, it could be one of the topics in a conference or in a meeting to see how we can use, uh, how we can learn uh, how we can learn from it and what we can do about it. And the other giveaway I forgot to mention is uh, in 2011, I did write a blog post because I, I did won the, the prize for the best um, innovative project with our team together. And I went to a, a learning technologies uh, conference and I did write a blog post uh, on in that period of time. And my giveaway was we as uh, educational supporters, we go to conferences with we meet educational su uh, supporters. But at the same time, there are uh, conferences with 
um, scientific uh, information uh, technologies building uh, few uh, functionalities which we are, are waiting for. So my give, and since then I also visit conferences where techn technicians are and to see with what kind of uh, functionalities they are piloting or uh, producing. Um, and I will share the URL of one of the conferences I, I visit because uh, there you get in contact with scientists and to see, okay, what do you have in, in your uh, roadmap and what kind of problems do you achieve? And most of the time they are looking for partners in testing their uh, uh, functionalities. And we are the, the test group and we are the intermediary between the end users and the scientists. So that's my other takeaway. Uh, take uh, go out of your bulb of own, um, um, stay, yeah, go out of your comfort zone and, and go to into contact with these persons because it gives you a lot of, um, it gives you a lot of information and insight. So that, that's part of where you get your knowledge of the technical um, side. Yeah. 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 Also. Okay, we, we can learn from that. Um, I also have a question for you. How do you think about working together with commercial uh, companies like Apple? Because you said uh, you worked on the iTunes and then you work together with Apple. And uh, how, how do you think about, in general, about working together with uh, the commercial part? You have to be very aware. You have to, if there is a win-win, I should say go for it. But I also been asked for, for other companies to work together with them. And I uh, did not want to do that because there was no win-win, you know, there was a win on their side, but not on my side. So you have to be fully aware of your position, what they have been asked. Uh, you, have to, you have to have a clear insight in, in their uh, hidden agenda behind the questions. Um, so be careful with it. And um, uh, only do it when you think there is a real win-win and only do it when you are still the owner of your own product and your own content. Uh, and otherwise, um, yes, I think uh, you have to, you need to think twice. Yes. Okay, thank you. That's a good warning. <laughs> are there any, any more questions? We haven't heard uh, everybody yet. Uh, my question to you is, was it what you were waiting for or did you expect totally something else? Because I can learn from it as well. So please uh, give feedback if you expected a total another kind mm. of information, just let me know. Um, for, for me, it, it was uh, what I expected and um, um, your interesting uh, talk and um, you give a lot of information in just half an hour time. So it was, uh, I think, yeah, it was what we meant. But maybe Paula can, um, um, can add to it. No, I totally agree with this comment, Monica. I, thank you. Thanks again, Silvia, for being so keen to share. And uh, it's amazing the amount of experiences you collected. And also, I look forward to dive into uh, the links that you are going to provide. Hopefully, most of them will have at least the summaries in English, because unfortunately, I speak no Dutch at all. But I understand that still most of the resources are mainly designed as a first step in, uh, in your national language. So it, this is totally understandable. And that's what uh, uh, any other country would do as a starting point. The thing is that uh, as an enabler, it will be very interesting for us to be uh, somehow allowed to, to read information in English so that we can, uh, of yeah. course, make the most out of them. But yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, my, my planning is to have it translated in June. Um, so it, in the first half year, you can reuse it in, uh, in the English language. Yes. There's a, a hand from. Uh, yeah, from Evie. 
Evie has uh, raised her hand. Um, hello, hello, everyone. Um, hello, Sylvia. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, this has been wonderful. Um, and I, I apologize, I came in a bit, a bit later, but it's really wonderful what you have achieved and shared here. Um, I would like to, to say that um, it's um, really useful to be able to unpack because you shared all these wonderful stories, but there is so concise um, and so, so much involved there. Uh, it will be really useful to have opportunities to unpack those and maybe share best practice and cases within these stories. Um, I think it will be important, as Vanessa said, to share the disappointments as well, because we've all lived through the disappointments. And it's all around time and budgets always and so on. But it will be lovely to know that it's not always success, success, success. It's good. It's going to be really empowering. And I wanted to say also that we really appreciate the English translations that are coming. Um, we are very much all looking forward to looking into this. So if you plan something for the future, for me, it would be great to unpack those as best cases or, you know, uh, good stories, um, uh, but in more detail and more depth. It will be uh, fantastic to have. Um, yeah. Thank you, Sylvia. Much appreciated. Lovely no, to see welcome. you all. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, I will. I will work on that. We have to have a look on um, the timing, what and when, because I have thirteen projects running now. But um, we will manage uh, somehow, somewhere uh, in between. Yes. Okay. And talking of time, I, I think it's uh, it's time, and we have to uh, go to uh, uh, the meeting. So, on behalf of all of us, thank you so much for your uh, interesting and wonderful story. We've learned a lot from it. And uh, the, the, the next in Rome will be a man. We have had three women for this uh, talk. <laughs> and uh, the next in line will be uh, Chris. So we are looking forward uh, to his talk. And thanks again, Sylvia. Uh, thanks for listening and thanks for all your questions. I'm looking forward to work together with you, all of you, and uh, see each other in workshops and work uh, and to, to strengthen our, our, our um, power to, to make the best where we can. Yes. So thank you for having me here and uh, asking me for this under the spotlight session. Yes. <laughs>